Hello again, welcome to another episode of the Uranium Market Minute. Today is Tuesday, February 22nd, and this is episode number 80. My name is Justin Hewn. I am your host. I'm the founder and publisher of the Uranium Insider Pro Newsletter, the only investing newsletter that focuses solely on uranium and publishes on a regular monthly basis. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, nothing in this video is intended to be investing advice. I'm not your financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. Please always do your own due diligence when it comes to investing, and always take responsibility for your own choices. All right, we had a long weekend, three-day weekend from the markets. Always nice to have kind of an extra day away from the screens. Hopefully, everyone is doing well and enjoyed that break. Um, we had uh, our members webinar last Thursday, so I was not here for a market minute, and then I took the day off on Friday. And um, back today with episode number 80, a lot going on in the world, a lot going on in the uranium markets. So let's jump right into it. Daily scoreboard. So spot price of uranium slipping slightly uh, down to 42.87 a pound mid market. Spot market volumes are starting to taper off here a bit from the high volumes we saw traded towards the end of January. Um, the numbers I'm going to give you here for SPUT and for the ETFs are for three days last Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So over the last three days of last week, SPUT raised only $769,000, a drop in the bucket for them of new investor capital, but they did manage to purchase 200,000 pounds last Wednesday. Total pounds acquired year to date now sit at 4.6 million pounds, 208.2 million in new capital raised. That's year to date for 2022, about seven weeks. On Friday, SPUT closed at a slight premium to NAV 0.48%. And today, the trust is trading up while the spot price slipped. So they likely, towards the end of the day, did raise a bit of capital. We'll know in a couple of hours. Um, they currently sit on 29.7 million in cash, which means they're likely they're not going to be purchasing any more uranium until they raise some more cash. They're now sitting on 45.9 million total pounds of uranium and have raised over $1.2 billion since last August. Their AUM now, their NAV is over 2 billion, $2.01 billion. Uh, that's more than 3x from when they took over UPC last, August, last July at 600 million in NAV. Turning to the ETFs, over the last three days of last week, URA issued yet another 200,000 new shares. Um, URNM issued none. For those of you who are wondering why URA is growing their share issuance much faster, we have touched on that briefly in a previous few episodes, but we, we went into it quite in depth in the um, members webinar on Thursday. So um, if you are a new member, or if you'd like to become a new member, you can access previous content. That members webinar was recorded, two hours of content that is streaming on our website in the members area. And of course, all of our previous content is accessible as well. So we go deep into what's going on with the ETFs and what it means for the sector. Of course, um, you know, very briefly, you probably understand that what we're noting is that there are inflows into these ETFs even throughout this correction since uh, mid-November, which is quite the astonishing thing to, uh, to note. So that ETF issuance by URA gave rise to 3.6 million in mandated buying. Not a whole lot, but it's something. Um, we have, of course, all-time all high outstanding share counts between the, new, the two ETFs. This year, inflows for 2022, uh, URA has increased their outstanding shares by 5.68 million, URNM by 800,000. That's 158.4 million in mandated buying coming from the two ETFs. Just amazing to see inflows continue to, to flow into the ETFs, despite the type of market that we've seen over the past six or seven weeks. Trading action, pretty weak last week. Obviously, we had a lot of broad market fears. We had a really nasty day on Friday. Um, the market does not like long weekends, especially when there's um, you know a geopolitical conflict on the table, which we are seeing happen in Ukraine. And so the market was down pretty heavily on Friday, including uh, the uranium shares. Today's market action is a little bit more supportive. We're actually seeing the broad market down a bit and uh, the uranium shares up a bit. So a bit of decoupling now, a single day does not make a trend, of course, but let's uh, take a look at the charts and see what's happening across the sector. So just to highlight a bit of outperformance today, let's first look at uh, the S&P, S&P 500 down over 1% on the day. Um, pretty volatile candle on the daily here. It did trade up from its lows. At one point in the day, it was looking really bad. Did see some dip buying come in, reasonable volumes, nothing huge, uh, but either way, a relatively weak broad market. And let's compare that to URA. URA up 0.4%, uh, 0.43% on the day. Again, not a huge move, 
but it's always interesting to see some relative outperformance with uranium shares compared to last month. Of course, um, we saw multiple days, even weeks of broad market weakness in January, and the uranium shares were down even heavier than the broad indices. This is a really good sign. This chart is holding up okay, still holding that upward trend line, yet we're still trading below that 200-day moving average, which is starting to turn over here. We'd like to see this correct uh, to the upside sometime soon. And of course, we'd like to see at least some sideways consolidation above this rising trend line. Cameco today was up, uh, let's see, up 2.42%. Pretty strong day for Cameco after a pretty rough day on Friday. Still not a whole lot of volume happening here. Either way, nice to see some green when everything else, uh, for the most part, across the markets were red. Uh, U, uh, U.UN, the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust, flat on the day. It did trade up. Like I mentioned, it was up about one, one and a half percent in the middle of the day. And we saw that spot price tick down. So they likely did raise some capital today. Although looking at the volumes, it probably was not much to write home about. So mailbag question. There is a question that came into me about the uh, Russian, uh, Russia and Ukraine conflict and um, specifically with Germans, uh, Germany's reaction to it. So Germany, uh, as part of NATO, of course, is um, saying that they are going to halt progress on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. So what does this mean? Uh, basically, they, Germany has a pipeline coming from Russia for natural gas, right? That's the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. And this is something they've been working on to increase the capacity uh, to, for natural gas to flow into the country. Germany, of course, has gone all out renewables over the past decade, $500 billion in, for the en Energy Vende program, um, putting into solar and wind. And they've shut down almost all of their nuclear reactors. There are three remaining operating reactors in the country. They just shut down three more at the end of last year. And they were a prominent um, nuclear uh, energy producing country for a number of decades. And they closed uh, about half of them after Fukushima and then continued to shut those down. So there's three remaining online. Since that nuclear phase out and the, um, the ramp up into renewables, Germany has had to vastly increase their natural gas and their coal energy production in order to supplement these um, you know, less reliable energy sources coming from renewables and the phase out of nuclear. So basically, what does this mean? Uh, Germany's ill-advised energy policy is coming back to haunt them. In December, they closed three of the remaining six reactors. I just mentioned that and have and ramped up coal and gas. So now they basically need Russian gas supplies or gas supplies from somewhere. Uh, there, you know, perhaps that'll now come from the U.S. That remains to be seen. Uh, Russia immediately shot back to Germany's um, statement that they will they will stop the they will halt the progress of the Nord Stream two gas pipeline. Um, with uh, Russia's uh, Medvedev lashing out, saying, "Welcome to the brave new world where Europeans are very soon going to pay two thousand euros for one cubic meter of natural gas." Unquote. Uh, so this is this is really interesting that Germany has taken this stance, considering they really find themselves in a in a tight spot coming from energy. Um, so this this is going to be a growing theme going forward, and this is going to be a theme that we are going to highlight in our uh, Uranium Insider Pro newsletter for March, which is energy independence and how fundamentally important that is for um, for nations, uh, you know, autonomy, especially in a situation like this where. Germany in particular would like to be in a place to uh, to try to put some sort of quote unquote sanction on, on Russia by doing this, by cutting off this gas pipeline. But they're really in a, in a place where this is going to probably bring very, very high energy prices and energy insecurity to their populace because of this move. Um, on the Russian Ukrainian note, we did hear uh, President Biden speak today about um, introducing san some sanctions on Russia. These seem to be primarily and at least initially sanctions on their financial institutions, but he is making a threat that the sanctions will only increase as aggression coming from Russia increases. Of course, over the weekend, we saw that um, Putin, along with the leaders of the separatist uh, areas of Ukraine, signing joint resolutions to declare these areas as independent. This, of course, is sort of Putin's way of saying these are now mine. Putin is now putting peacekeeping troops into the areas. 
Um, I'm not going to speculate much on this because this is not really my area of expertise, so I'm going to leave that alone. However, it clearly is still a, um, a contentious situation, a tense situation. And the fact that, they're, that the U.S. is now implementing some type of sanctions on Russia, um, we'll really have to watch this going forward. Of course, if there end up being sanctions on energy, in particular sanctions on Russian uranium, um, Russia provides a, a significant minority percentage. I think it's, if I recall correctly, about 40% of global enrichment. So there's a decent amount of energy of uranium and rich uranium that comes from Russia into the States and worldwide. So if we saw sanctions on that, that would significantly disrupt the fuel cycle and the uranium market. And that's not something we are trading around, we're speculating on. But of course, if that did happen, that would have pretty massive implications for the uranium market, at least for the short term, when that type of sanction would be in place. So we continue to watch this situation. And for now, it seems like the markets are trying to digest what this means. And uh, the energy markets, of course, did respond relatively well today, especially uranium, um, relative to the broad markets, which were pretty weak. So that's a good sign. And uh, going forward, we'll have to continue to keep an, our eye on the situation. But either way, nice to see uranium shares sort of stabilize today, despite the uh, fear in the air around the situation in the broad markets. All right, I'll leave you guys with that. We will see you tomorrow and hope all is well. Cheers.